Welcome back to Intro to Extended Techniques. I'm oboist and composer Laura Atkins, and today we are talking about singing while playing. If you haven't yet watched the intro video on my YouTube channel, I would recommend you do that first. Uh, I explain what the phrase extended techniques means, and I also give an overview of the structure of my method book and of these techniques videos. Now, I'll be honest, singing while playing is not a technique that's called for all that frequently in a lot of music that I've seen. There are some pieces that utilize it, um, but the reason that I think it's important to work on and important to teach is because you cannot do it if you have excess neck tension while you're playing. Now that's something that I struggled with when I was starting to learn extended techniques. Uh, that's something that I know some of my students have struggled with as well. And I find teaching this to be really beneficial. Uh, it's a very good way to get physical feedback on whether or not you have too much neck tension while you're playing. Singing while playing is going to feel at first a little bit strange. Uh, it's going to feel maybe like high pressure humming, right? But it's important to focus on using your air well to generate this pressure as opposed to neck tension or tensing your shoulders or any other added tension anywhere else. The first step to learning how to sing while you are playing the oboe is to take the oboe completely out of the equation, I'm gonna put it down and to just Form an oboe embouchure, exhale as though you are playing the oboe, and then try to activate your vocal cords. Try to hum, try to sing. So first, just right. make sure that you have good air support, enough that it would make the reed vibrate if you were playing the oboe, and then try to add your voice. That's it, that's step one. As you're working on this, you want to increase the amount of time you can hold that note without it wavering or dropping out. And you wanna to work to keep that pitch steady. And instead of going up, going down, going up, going down, you wanna to try to sing the same note constantly, just to make sure that you're using your air support correctly and that we're setting a good foundation for the next step. Sometimes I like to put my hand in front of my face as well, just to make sure I can feel that stream of air, to make sure that I'm using enough air that I would be able to make the reed vibrate once we get to using the reed. So, the next step is to do the same thing, but using just the reed. So separate from the oboe, you're going to, again, make a pitch on the reed as if you were playing the oboe, right? With your normal embouchure. And then you are going to add your vocal cords. Same thing as we just did without the reed. This time we're adding the reed. Now, the sound will be much more muffled, right? The sound of your vocal cords will be much more muffled because you have a reed in the way. And that's okay. That's what happens. That's what it's supposed to sound like. The last exercise is with the full instrument. Put the reed back in the oboe. We are going to play a pitch, and then we are going to add in our vocal cords, just like we have been doing. Now I'm adjusting my microphone and adjusting my seat to get a little bit closer to my actual throat for this, uh, just to give you guys a better chance of hearing the actual singing. Now I'm gonna try singing a different pitch in case that's easier for you to hear on the microphone. In pieces that do call for singing while playing, sometimes they also recommend that you actually put a contact microphone on your throat to help amplify your voice. So it's understood that your singing will be muted. It will be muffled because you have the instrument in your face in the way. Now this is the part that might start to feel physically a little bit strange, right? When I first started working on this and when some of my students start working on this, they feel kind of uncomfortable. It's a strange sensation that you probably haven't felt anything like it before, right? There are a lot of extra vibrations happening and that's all right. Know that that's normal. You can take it slow, take a break. You can stop if you need to. There's no hurry here. In the exercise in the method book, 
I give you three different notes to play. You start on a C, you move to an F, you move to a D. Just notice how the physical sensation changes based on what note you're playing. Again, take your time, there's no hurry here. I also wanna say that at this point, we are not trying to hit any particular pitch with our voice. Everybody's vocal range is different. And right now, what's important is that you just get used to the sensation of adding in your voice while you're playing. The etude for this section is a nice, slow, easy, allegretto tempo. There's nothing too technically complex on the playing side because I really want you to have the opportunity to just get your voice involved. Play it musically, pay attention to the dynamics and the articulations that are marked in there, but just get used to adding your voice in when it's marked. As always, you can find a full recording of the etude on my website, lauraadkinsmusic.com, or on my YouTube channel in the same playlist as all of these techniques videos. Happy practicing.